On the sixth day of creation, after God made Adam, He made a statement that many theologians and preachers have often probed and talked about outside the context of God's purpose for creation. The book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 18 reads, And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him an helpmate for him. Now it is not that men cannot be single, or that a woman cannot be single, but what God is saying here is that it is not good for that man, Adam, to be alone. It's not good because in the context of God's creation, God created Adam to be fruitful and multiply, to reproduce himself biologically among other spiritual, social, and economic responsibilities. And he cannot accomplish this alone without the assistance of the woman. Just as God reflected on the works of his goodness on the first five days of Genesis, it was the goodness of God that necessitated the creation of women. The younger and contemporary version of men are sometimes they like to think they're better. God created women to reflect his goodness. So every woman, however lost, damaged or evil, is capable of God's goodness. This is also why the scripture states in the book of Proverbs 18 verse 22 that he who finds a wife has found a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. It is not he who dates or marries a woman, but he who finds a wife. A wife is a woman who can help a man even if they are not yet married. A wife is also a midwife who can help a man birth his purpose. There is more that I will delve into on this subject as we continue this video series. Have you ever wondered why women love to wear designer shoes and collect them? particularly high-heeled shoes, despite the discomfort and pain they have from wearing them. Over the years, it has become an interior trend to have a shoe closet for women who can afford one. But ironically, high-heeled shoes were originally designed for men. Allegedly, the first high-heeled shoes were first seen in ancient Egypt around 3500 BCE. And Egypt, as we know from history and the story of Moses and Pharaoh, is synonymous with the symbolism of the serpent. In the 10th century, high heel shoes were made for Persian soldiers, which is modern day Iran, also known as the Persian cavalrymen, who wore heeled cowboy boots to ride on horses as they went to war. It was after this that high heel shoes came to Europe and became increasingly popular with the Western trends of fashion. But well, the purpose for the original design directly mirrors the 15th verse of Genesis chapter 3, which highlights the war between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. It is fascinating that as urban and contemporary as the city life of a woman in heels are, it was scripted by God into human nature and civilization. Perhaps this is why the Bible is called the Holy Scriptures. Who would have thought that heels were designed originally for war. Furthermore, the posture enhancement from wearing high heels are known to exaggerate the chest and hips of a woman and to increase her pelvic tilt. So as a woman walks in heels, the front of her foot presses toward the ground while her midfoot and hind foot are angulated in an elevated posture. But can you see the prophetic implication of this conceptual design? That as a woman walking heels, her forefoot while propelling her body forward simultaneously lifts her midfoot and hind foot off the, off the ground so that her body is lifted upward as she walks forward. It's a fascinating concept, in my opinion, and design. Though the weight of the body of the woman is supposed to be evenly distributed across the sole of her feet, where the, so where the nerve endings are all situated. The pressure of the weight of our body is concentrated in the forefoot region, which relieves our midfoot from absorbing the shock off the ground and our hind foot as well, where our ankles are situated and supported by fat tissue of the largest bone in the foot, which usually provides the best support for the entire weight of the body. It is the forefoot that carries the entire weight of the body of a woman who walk in heels, which is a very uncomfortable way to walk women still do it with more ease and grace than men. Men tried it for a while and they gave up shortly after. 
but women have been walking in heels for many centuries now because they are the most eligible models to walk in stilettos and high heels. As we know, our feet are responsible for our body's mobility, support and balance. So if anything should go wrong with our feet, it would affect its unique contribution and functionalities to our body. Our foot is the root of our body and is comparatively similar to the root of a tree or the foundation of a building. So this is an important foundational message to ponder and consider. Even as mundane and ordinary as it sounds, it is an apostolic and prophetic message for women and the church of God in Christ Jesus. So what is the prophetic significance of women in high heels, you may ask. The prophetic significance of women in high heels is because the woman is supposed to step on the head of the serpent, while she protects her heels and hind foot region from the serpent's bite. Despite the misuse of heels by women in strip joints and club houses, a woman in heels is a biblical portraiture of a woman at war with the serpent. Ladies, it is biblical prophecy for you to walk in high heels. <laughs> now, I know some of you will be happy to hear this, but hold on now. Don't get too excited just yet. Hold on, because it is my prayer for you that this external gesture will be captured in your internal posture toward God because you cannot resist the devil unless you submit to God. 